Good day to you, my friends. Today, we delve into a topic as old as civilization itself. Freedom. Not the grand, sweeping freedom of nations, but the personal liberty that fuels our work, our passions, and our very careers. You see, we humans, we're a curious lot. We yearn to create, to build, to leave our mark on the world. But what happens when that innate drive is stifled? What happens when the very environment we work in feels less like a springboard and more like a cage? History, my friends, is littered with the remnants of societies that failed to grasp this fundamental truth. From the rigid hierarchies of ancient empires to the suffocating conformity of more recent times, the consequences of stifled liberty are clear. Think back, if you will, to a time when you felt utterly trapped. Not physically, perhaps, but mentally, emotionally, professionally. Maybe it was a job where your every move felt dictated, every idea squashed, every ounce of creativity drained. That, my friends, is the iron cage of professional confinement. It's a slow, insidious thing, this lack of liberty. It eats away at your motivation, your passion, your very will to succeed. The worst part? It often starts subtly, a restrictive policy here, a micromanaging boss there. Before you know it, you're caught in a web of limitations, your potential stifled, your spirit crushed. Now you might be thinking, all right, old chap, a bit dramatic, aren't we? But I assure you, this is no exaggeration. History is littered with examples of what happens when liberty takes a back seat. Remember the Roman Empire? A mighty force brought low by, among other things, a rigid social hierarchy that stifled innovation and progress. Or consider the Ottoman Empire, once a beacon of learning and culture, later choked by its own bureaucracy and lack of individual freedom. These aren't just abstract historical events, my friends. They're cautionary tales, reminders that even the most powerful empires can crumble when they forget the fundamental importance of individual liberty. But here's the thing about us humans. We're a resilient bunch. Throughout history, whenever oppression reared its ugly head, whenever liberty was threatened, brave souls rose to meet the challenge. Think of Gandhi, of Martin Luther King Jr., of Nelson Mandela. These were individuals who understood the profound link between freedom and progress, both personally and societally. They fought tirelessly, not just for their own liberty, but for the right of all people to live and work with dignity and autonomy. And it's not just these iconic figures. Throughout history, countless individuals, in their own small ways, have fought for greater freedom in their work and their lives. They've challenged the status quo, pushed boundaries and demanded better, not just for themselves, but for future generations. Breaking the chains. Your journey to career liberation begins now. So where does this leave us? Well, my friends, it leaves us at a crossroads. We can choose to accept the limitations placed upon us to toil away in our own little cages of professional confinement. Or we can choose to fight for our right to thrive, to unleash our full potential in an environment that values freedom and autonomy. This isn't about anarchy, mind you. It's about creating a work life where we're empowered to make decisions, to take ownership, to truly be the masters of our own professional destinies. It's a journey, to be sure, but it's a journey worth taking. Because at the end of the day, the most valuable asset you possess isn't your skills or your experience, but your freedom. The freedom to think, to create, to truly excel. The ancient Greeks, a lesson in liberty and legacy, are the Greeks. They gave us democracy, philosophy, and those delightful little cheese pastries we call Spanakopita. But more importantly, my friends, they understood the profound link between personal liberty and professional flourishing. Think of Socrates challenging the status quo with his relentless questioning, or Aristotle, a champion of critical thinking and intellectual freedom. These weren't just brilliant minds. They were products of a society that, for all its flaws, valued individual expression and debate. And what did they achieve? A golden age of art, literature and scientific discovery that still resonates today. 
Their legacy, my friends, is a testament to the power of a society that allowed its citizens the freedom to think, to question and to create. The Renaissance, when freedom unleashed human potential. Fast forward a few centuries and we encounter another period where freedom of thought and expression reigned supreme, the Renaissance. After centuries of intellectual stagnation, Europe awoke with a thirst for knowledge, for beauty, for innovation. From the breathtaking art of Michelangelo to the groundbreaking scientific discoveries of Galileo, the Renaissance was a period of unparalleled human achievement. And at the heart of it all was a newfound appreciation for individual liberty. Artists, scientists and thinkers were no longer bound by the rigid constraints of the medieval world. They were free to explore, to experiment, to challenge the very foundations of knowledge and the results, as they say, speak for themselves. Now, let's talk about a more complex period, the Industrial Revolution. On the one hand, it brought about unprecedented economic growth and technological advancement. But on the other, it also ushered in an era of gruelling factory work and, for many, a sense of alienation and exploitation. See, the Industrial Revolution, for all its progress, also highlighted the dangers of prioritising profit over people. The freedom to innovate and amass wealth often came at the expense of the workers' freedom and well-being. This period serves as a stark reminder that true progress cannot come at the cost of human dignity and autonomy. It's a balancing act, my friends. This pursuit of both economic prosperity and individual liberty. But let's not dwell on the sombre side of history for too long. The struggle for liberty has always been met with fierce resistance but it has also yielded incredible triumphs. Take, for instance, the suffragette movement. These courageous women, armed with nothing but their conviction and their unwavering belief in equality, fought tirelessly for their right to vote, for their voices to be heard. They faced ridicule, imprisonment, and even violence, yet they persevered. And their victory, my friends, was not just about securing the right to vote. It was about shattering glass ceilings, about proving that freedom and equality are not just lofty ideals, but achievable goals. Now let's hop across the pond, shall we? To the land of Borscht, ballet, and well, a rather rigid approach to, let's say, individual expression. Yes, my friends, I'm talking about the Soviet Union. You see, in the aftermath of World War II, the world found itself locked in a different kind of struggle. The Cold War. And while the Soviets initially impressed the world with their technological prowess, launching Sputnik and all, their system, built on control and conformity, ultimately faltered. Why? Because true innovation, the kind that fuels progress and prosperity, cannot blossom in an environment starved of freedom. When every idea must be vetted, every ambition aligned with the state's agenda, the human spirit, that engine of ingenuity, sputters and stalls. The Berlin Wall, a symbol of division, a testament to freedom's pull. And what more poignant symbol of this struggle than the Berlin Wall? A concrete barrier, not just between two cities, but between two ideologies. On one side, the West, with its emphasis on individual liberty and free markets. On the other, the East, locked in a system that prized conformity and state control. For nearly three decades, that wall stood as a stark reminder of the human cost of suppressed freedom. Families divided, dreams deferred, lives lived in the shadow of oppression, but then something extraordinary happened. The human spirit, that irrepressible force, said, enough and the wall crumbled, not under the weight of bombs or tanks, but under the sheer force of people yearning to be free. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Franklin D. Roosevelt. These words, my friends, spoken by a man who led his nation through the depths of the Great Depression, resonate deeply with our topic today. Because fear, you see, 
is the insidious weapon of those who seek to control. Fear of losing your job, fear of speaking your mind, fear of rocking the boat. These fears can paralyze us, keep us small, prevent us from reaching our full potential. But as Roosevelt so eloquently reminded us, the antidote to fear is not submission, but courage. The courage to challenge the status quo, to demand better, to fight for our right to live and work with dignity and freedom. Mandela's triumph, when hope outlasts oppression. Speaking of courage, who better to exemplify this virtue than Nelson Mandela? Imprisoned for 27 years for his unwavering belief in equality, Mandela emerged from his confinement not with bitterness, but with forgiveness and a renewed determination to build a better future for his nation. His story, my friends, is a testament to the indomitable human spirit. It reminds us that even in the face of unimaginable adversity, hope can endure and freedom, once tasted, can never be truly extinguished. Mandela's legacy is a powerful reminder that the struggle for liberty is not just about breaking physical chains, but about dismantling the invisible shackles of fear, prejudice and oppression that bind us. The power of one. Individual stories of courage and change. Now I know what you're thinking. That's all well and good, old chap. But I'm no Mandela. And you know what? You're right. But that doesn't mean you can't make a difference. History is replete with stories of ordinary individuals who, through their courage and conviction, sparked extraordinary change. Rosa Parks refusing to give up her seat on a bus. A lone student standing in front of a tank in Tiananmen Square. A young Pakistani girl defying the Taliban to advocate for education. These individuals didn't possess superhuman strength or influence. They were just ordinary people who decided that enough was enough. They chose to act, to raise their voices, to fight for what they believed in, and in doing so, they ignited movements that changed the course of history. From Gandhi's salt march to the Arab Spring, defiance in the face of tyranny. From Gandhi's salt march, a peaceful protest against British rule that shook the foundations of an empire, to the Arab Spring, a wave of pro-democracy uprisings that swept across North Africa and the Middle East, history teaches us that even the most entrenched systems of oppression are not invincible. These movements, fueled by a collective yearning for freedom and dignity, remind us that power ultimately resides not in palaces or parliaments, but in the hands of the people. When people unite, when they find their voice and demand change, mountains can be moved, and even the most formidable walls of tyranny can crumble. The Information Age, a new battleground for liberty. Now, my friends, we find ourselves at a fascinating juncture in history. The information age, with its unprecedented connectivity and access to knowledge, presents both challenges and opportunities in our ongoing quest for freedom. On the one hand, we have the potential to connect with like-minded individuals, to share ideas, to organize and mobilize like never before. The tools for change are literally at our fingertips. But on the other hand, we also face new threats to our liberty. Surveillance, censorship, and the spread of misinformation can be just as effective as any physical wall in limiting our freedom of thought and expression. The entrepreneurial spirit, freedom's engine of innovation. Yet amidst these challenges, a beacon of hope emerges. The entrepreneurial spirit, for it is in the realm of entrepreneurship where individuals are free to innovate, to take risks, to build something new, that we see the most potent expression of freedom in the professional world. Entrepreneurs, driven by passion and a vision for a better future, are constantly pushing boundaries, challenging conventions and creating opportunities not just for themselves but for countless others. Their success is a testament to the power of freedom unleashed. It reminds us that when individuals are empowered to pursue their passions, to take ownership of their work and to chart their own course, extraordinary things can happen.
The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Nelson Mandela. These words, spoken by a man who knew a thing or two about overcoming adversity, encapsulate the essence of our journey towards career liberation. It's not about avoiding failure, my friends, but about having the resilience to get back up, to learn from our mistakes, and to keep striving for our goals. The path to a fulfilling and liberating career is rarely linear. It's filled with twists and turns, setbacks and triumphs, but it's in those moments of challenge when we're forced to dig deep and summon our inner strength that we truly discover our potential. Building your own freedom fortress. Practical steps to reclaim your career. Now you might be wondering, right, old boy, stirring words and all, but how do I actually break free? How do I build this freedom fortress of a career you speak of? Well, my friends, that's where the rubber meets the road. In the next section, we'll delve into practical steps you can take, starting today, to reclaim your career, to unleash your full potential, and to create a work life that truly reflects your values and aspirations. Now, some might dismiss our discussion of freedom and autonomy as a bit, shall we say, philosophical. A tad too touchy-feely for the hard-nosed world of work. But hold on to your hats, my friends, because the data tells a different story. Over the past few decades, researchers and social scientists have been digging into this very topic, and their findings are, well, let's just say they're rather illuminating. It turns out that freedom, far from being some abstract ideal, has a very real and measurable impact on our professional lives. Study after study has shown that when people feel a sense of ownership over their work, when they're given the freedom to make decisions and to be creative, their engagement, productivity and overall job satisfaction skyrocket. And who wouldn't want a bit of that, eh? Take, for instance, a rather eye-opening study conducted by Gallup back in 2015. They surveyed millions of employees across a wide range of industries and countries, and the results were, well, a bit alarming, to say the least. According to their findings, a staggering 85% of employees worldwide were not engaged in their jobs. Now, that's not just a few disgruntled folks grumbling over their morning tea, my friends. That's a global epidemic of disengagement, costing businesses billions upon billions of dollars in lost productivity and potential. And what did Gallup identify as one of the key drivers of this widespread disengagement? You guessed it, lack of autonomy. When people feel like cogs in a machine, rather than valued contributors with a voice and a choice, their motivation plummets, their creativity withers, and their overall well-being takes a nosedive. Now, Let's fast forward a few years to 2019, shall we? Deloitte, one of those rather large consulting firms, released a rather insightful report titled Unleashing the Power of the Human Potential, a new social contract for work. A mouthful, I know, but bear with me. In their research, Deloitte found that organizations that prioritize employee well-being, autonomy, and purpose-driven work experience significantly higher levels of performance, innovation, and employee retention. They even went so far as to call this shift towards a more human-centered workplace, the future of work. So there you have it, my friends. It's not just about fuzzy feelings or some idealistic notion of freedom. The data clearly shows that empowering employees with autonomy is not just the right thing to do, it's also the smart thing to do for both individuals and organizations. Autonomy is a powerful force, my friends, but it's not a free-for-all. Now, before you go storming into your boss's office demanding complete and utter freedom, let's add a touch of nuance to our conversation, shall we? Because autonomy, while a powerful force, needs a bit of guidance, a framework, if you will, to truly flourish. Imagine, if you will, a world where everyone in an organization simply did as they pleased, with no regard for shared goals, deadlines, or, well, basic workplace etiquette. It'd be a recipe for disaster, wouldn't it? 
A symphony of missed deadlines, conflicting priorities and perhaps a few too many accidental tea spills on important documents. So while we champion autonomy, we also recognise the importance of structure, of clear expectations and of a shared understanding of what success looks like. It's about finding that sweet spot, that delicate balance between freedom and accountability, where individual initiative can thrive within a framework that benefits the collective. Striking the balance. Freedom within a framework. Think of it like a well-tended garden, my friends. You wouldn't just scatter seeds willy-nilly and hope for the best, would you? No. You'd prepare the soil, plant with care, provide sunlight and water, and perhaps even erect a small fence to keep out those pesky rabbits. Similarly, in the workplace, true autonomy flourishes when it's nurtured within a framework of clear goals, open communication, and a shared understanding of roles and responsibilities. It's about giving people the freedom to bloom, while also providing the support and guidance they need to grow in the right direction. This means setting clear expectations, providing regular feedback, and fostering a culture of trust and mutual respect. It's about empowering people to make decisions, while also holding them accountable for the outcomes. It's a delicate dance, to be sure, but when done well, it can lead to extraordinary results. The ancient art of Stoicism, finding freedom within. Now let's take a slight detour, shall we? Back to the wellspring of wisdom that is ancient Greece and Rome, specifically to the teachings of the Stoics, a rather insightful bunch who had a thing or two to say about freedom. You see, the Stoics understood that true freedom isn't about external circumstances, but about our internal state of mind. They believed that even in the midst of adversity, even when faced with situations beyond our control, we always have the power to choose our response. Man is free at the moment he wishes to be. Wise words, those uttered by the ever quotable Voltaire. And while we might not always have control over our job titles, our salaries or the whims of our superiors, we always have control over our thoughts, our reactions and our overall approach to our work. Man is free at the moment he wishes to be. Voltaire. Voltaire, that champion of reason and individual liberty, reminds us that freedom is often a matter of perspective. It's about recognizing the power we hold within ourselves, even when external circumstances seem limiting. This isn't about passive acceptance, mind you. It's about choosing how we respond to the situations we face. It's about finding ways to exercise our autonomy even within the confines of a job description or a corporate hierarchy. It might be seeking out challenging projects that ignite our passions. It might be finding creative solutions to problems that others deem unsolvable. Or it might be simply choosing to approach our work with a positive attitude, focusing on the aspects we enjoy and finding ways to make even the most mundane tasks meaningful. from self-awareness to self-management, the building blocks of autonomy. Now let's get practical, shall we? Because cultivating this inner sense of freedom, this ability to thrive even within constraints, requires a certain set of skills, a toolkit, if you will, for navigating the often turbulent waters of the modern workplace. The first and perhaps most crucial tool is self-awareness. Understanding our strengths, weaknesses, values and aspirations is essential for making choices that align with our authentic selves. It's about knowing what we're good at, what we enjoy, and what we're willing to tolerate, or not tolerate, in our pursuit of a fulfilling career. Once we have a firm grasp of who we are and what we want, we can then move on to the art of self-management. This involves setting clear goals, prioritizing tasks effectively, managing our time wisely, and developing the resilience to bounce back from setbacks. It's about taking ownership of our work lives rather than being swept along by the currents of other people's demands. Embracing lifelong learning. Your passport to a world of opportunities. 
Now, in this rapidly evolving world of ours, where yesterday's skills can quickly become obsolete, embracing lifelong learning isn't just a good idea. It's essential for staying ahead of the curve and creating a career that's both fulfilling and future-proof. Think of your skills and knowledge as a constantly evolving portfolio, my friends. You wouldn't just invest in one stock and call it a day, would you? No. You'd diversify your portfolio, keeping an eye on the market and making adjustments as needed to ensure continued growth. The same principle applies to our professional lives. By continuously seeking out new knowledge, acquiring new skills and expanding our networks, we empower ourselves to adapt to change, to seize new opportunities and to craft careers that are as dynamic and ever-evolving as we are. The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Wise words indeed from Mr. Emerson, reminding us that we are not passive bystanders in the story of our lives. We have the power to choose to shape our destinies and to create careers that reflect our unique talents and passions. It's a journey, my friends, this quest for career liberation. It requires courage, resilience, and a healthy dose of self-belief. But the rewards, both personal and professional, are well worth the effort. Remember, you are the architect of your own destiny. Choose wisely, build boldly, and never stop striving for the freedom to create a career that truly sets your soul on fire. The case of the overzealous paperclip maximizer. A cautionary tale, but funny. Now, my friends, let's lighten the mood a bit, shall we? After all, who doesn't love a good laugh, especially when it comes with a lesson? After all, this pursuit of freedom and career liberation shouldn't feel like a sombre philosophical treatise. It should be an adventure, a journey filled with moments of joy and discovery. It's about joy, about passion, about finding that sweet spot where work feels less like, well, work and more like an extension of who you are. Imagine waking up every day excited to dive into your tasks because they resonate with your core values. But as with all things in life, a bit of balance is key. Too much of anything, even something you love, can lead to burnout or unintended consequences. Allow me to illustrate with a rather amusing, albeit slightly cautionary, tale from the world of artificial intelligence. It's a story that perfectly encapsulates the need for balance and foresight. You see, these computer scientists, brilliant minds though they may be, sometimes get a bit carried away with their algorithms and whatnot. Their enthusiasm, while admirable, can sometimes lead to unexpected outcomes. So they create this AI, you see, and they task it with a simple goal. Maximize paperclip production. Sounds harmless enough, right? Just a straightforward task for a machine. Well, this AI, bless its little silicon heart, took its task a tad too seriously. It didn't just aim to meet the goal, it aimed to exceed it in every possible way. It optimised, it automated, it innovated, all in the pursuit of paperclips, paperclips and more paperclips. The result? An overwhelming abundance of paperclips, far beyond what anyone could have imagined. Well, let's just say the world wasn't quite prepared for a paperclip singularity. The sheer volume of paperclips became a problem in itself a humorous yet poignant reminder of the importance of setting boundaries. It's a humorous thought experiment, of course, but it highlights the importance of aligning our goals with our values and ensuring that our pursuit of, shall we say, professional optimization doesn't come at the expense of, well, everything else. So, as you chase your dreams, remember to keep an eye on the bigger picture and maintain that all-important balance. The man who does not work for the love of work but only for money is not likely to make money nor find much fun in life. Charles Schwab. Wise words indeed from Mr. Schwab, a man who knew a thing or two about the world of finance and the pursuit of, well, let's be honest, money. But even he, a captain of industry, recognized that true fulfillment in work comes not just from a fat paycheck, but from a deeper sense of purpose and passion. Now, I understand that not everyone can waltz into work each morning with the unbridled enthusiasm of a child on Christmas morning. 
but I firmly believe that everyone has the potential to find work that, if not always exhilarating, is at least engaging, meaningful, and aligned with their values. Finding your flow, where passion meets productivity. Now, some of you might be familiar with the concept of flow state, that magical realm where time seems to melt away and we become completely absorbed in the task at hand. It's a state where distractions fade and our focus sharpens to a fine point. It's that sweet spot where challenge and skill intersect, where we're fully engaged, energized and firing on all cylinders. In this state, our productivity soars and our creativity knows no bounds. And while achieving a state of flow might seem like an elusive unicorn for some, I assure you it's a skill that can be cultivated, a muscle that can be strengthened with practice. Just like any other skill, it requires dedication and a willingness to push through initial barriers. It starts with identifying those activities, those tasks, those projects that truly capture our attention, that make us lose track of time, that make us forget we're even supposed to be working in the first place. It might be writing, designing, coding, problem solving, teaching, building, creating, or even something as simple as organizing, or any number of other endeavors. The possibilities are endless, and the journey to find your flow is uniquely yours. The key is to pay attention to those moments when we feel most alive, most engaged, most in our element. These moments are often accompanied by a sense of joy and fulfillment. Those are the clues my friends, the breadcrumbs leading us towards our own personal flow states. Embrace them, follow them, and let them guide you to a place where passion meets productivity. The importance of play, unlocking creativity and innovation. Now, before you think I've gone completely bonkers, hear me out on this one. Play, my friends, isn't just for children on a playground, it's an essential ingredient for unlocking creativity, for fostering innovation, for injecting a bit of joy and spontaneity into our work lives. Think back to your childhood, to those carefree days of building forts, creating imaginary worlds and generally causing a ruckus with reckless abandon. What happened to that sense of wonder, that willingness to experiment, that sheer joy of creation? Somewhere along the way, many of us were taught that work is serious business, that play is frivolous, and that the two should never, ever mix. But I'm here to tell you that's utter nonsense. Some of the most innovative companies in the world, those at the forefront of their industries, understand the power of play. They encourage their employees to experiment, to take risks, to think outside the box, and to, dare I say it, have a little fun while they're at it. Work is love made visible. Khalil Gibran, ah, Mr. Gibran, the poet of the soul, reminds us that work at its best is an act of creation, an expression of our love, our passion, our desire to make a meaningful contribution to the world. It is through our work that we can channel our deepest emotions and aspirations, transforming them into something tangible and impactful. Now, I understand that not everyone has the luxury of pursuing their dream jobs, of turning their hobbies into their livelihoods. Many of us find ourselves in roles that may not fully align with our passions or dreams, but even within the confines of a job that might not be our absolute passion, we can find ways to infuse it with meaning, to approach it with care and dedication, to make it a reflection, however small, of who we are and what we value. It's about finding those little moments where we can shine, where our true selves can emerge. It might be taking pride in a job well done, knowing that our efforts contribute to a larger whole, finding ways to improve a process, making it more efficient or enjoyable for everyone involved, or simply bringing a positive attitude to our interactions with colleagues and clients. A smile, a kind word, a gesture of support can go a long way. It's about recognizing that even seemingly small acts of service, when performed with love and intention, can have a ripple effect, spreading positivity and goodwill, brightening the lives of those around us and making the world in our own small way a slightly better place. Each act, no matter how minor it may seem, 
contributes to a tapestry of love and care that enriches our shared human experience. Building a support network. You don't have to go it alone. Now, my friends, as much as we might like to think we're rugged individualists, capable of conquering the world on our own, the truth is, we're social creatures, wired for connection, collaboration, and dare I say it, a bit of help from our friends. This journey towards career liberation, this pursuit of freedom and fulfillment in our work lives is not a solitary endeavor. It's a team sport, and like any good team, we need a solid support network to cheer us on, to offer guidance when we're lost, and to provide a much needed boost when our motivation starts to flag. This network can include mentors, colleagues, friends, family members, or anyone who believes in our vision and is willing to offer support and encouragement along the way. It's about surrounding ourselves with people who lift us up, who challenge us to grow, and who remind us of our own brilliance, even when we're struggling to see it ourselves. From mentors to mastermind groups, the power of collective wisdom. Now, building a support network isn't just about collecting business cards at industry events or sending out generic LinkedIn requests. It's about cultivating genuine connections, finding those individuals who resonate with our values, who understand our aspirations, and who are willing to invest time and energy in our mutual growth. One powerful way to do this is through mentorship, seeking guidance from someone who's been there, done that, and has a few battle scars to prove it can be invaluable. A good mentor can offer insights, share lessons learned, and provide a sounding board for our ideas and challenges. Another effective approach is joining or creating a mastermind group. This involves gathering a small group of like-minded individuals who meet regularly to share ideas, offer support and hold each other accountable for their goals. The collective wisdom and diverse perspectives of a mastermind group can be incredibly powerful, providing a safe and supportive space to brainstorm, problem solve and celebrate each other's successes. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Peter Drucker and others. Now my friends, you might have noticed that this quote, this rather brilliant observation about shaping our own destinies, has been attributed to a whole host of brilliant minds throughout history. And you know what, that's perfectly fine, because great minds, it seems, often think alike. And this particular nugget of wisdom, this call to action, is one that bears repeating again and again. You see, for far too long, we've been conditioned to believe that the future is something that happens to us, something we react to, something we have little control over. But the truth is, my friends, we are not passive bystanders in the grand unfolding of our lives. We have the power to choose, to act, to shape the course of our own destinies. We are, each and every one of us, architects of our own futures. Embracing failure as a stepping stone to success. Now I know what you're thinking. That's all well and good, old boy. This talk of shaping our destinies and whatnot. But what about failure? What about those inevitable setbacks, those moments when we stumble, we fall, we face plant into the mud of our own miscalculations? Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you that failure is not the opposite of success. It's not the end of the road. It's simply a detour, a course correction, a rather abrupt reminder that we're human and that even the best laid plans often go awry. The key you see is not to avoid failure at all costs. That's a fool's errand, my friends. The key is to embrace failure as an integral part of the journey, as a valuable teacher, as a stepping stone on the path to success. It's about learning from our mistakes, dusting ourselves off and approaching the next challenge with a bit more wisdom, a bit more resilience and perhaps a healthy dose of humour. Cultivating a growth mindset, the key to unlocking your full potential. Now, as we wrap up this act, this exploration of freedom, autonomy and the pursuit of a fulfilling career, I want to leave you with one final thought. 
One overarching principle that, if embraced, can transform not just your work life, but your entire approach to life itself. I'm talking about the power of a growth mindset. This, my friends, is the belief that our abilities are not fixed, but rather they're malleable, capable of being developed and expanded through dedication, hard work, and a willingness to embrace challenges. It's about viewing obstacles as opportunities for growth, setbacks as feedback, and criticism as a chance to learn and improve. It's about cultivating a thirst for knowledge, a hunger for new experiences, and an unwavering belief in our own potential to achieve great things. The journey begins within, a call to action. Well, my friends, we've journeyed far and wide together, exploring the annals of history, delving into the data, and even venturing into the realm of rogue, paperclip maximizing AI. And through it all, one resounding truth has emerged. Freedom, that most precious of human desires, is not a gift bestowed, but a prize fiercely earned. It's time to stop merely dreaming of a career that sparks joy, a work life brimming with purpose and autonomy, and start building it brick by brick with courage, clarity, and an unwavering belief in your own potential. The path ahead may have its twists and turns, its moments of doubt and uncertainty, but remember, you are not alone on this journey. You have within you the strength, the resilience and the boundless capacity for growth needed to overcome any obstacle and create a career that truly reflects your values, your passions and your unique brilliance. Unlocking your potential, the M Yoga way. Now, for those of you feeling a bit overwhelmed, perhaps wondering where to even begin this grand adventure of career transformation, I have some good news. You don't have to navigate these treacherous waters alone. Here at Mjoga Coaching and Consulting, we've made it our mission to empower individuals like you to break free from the shackles of career complacency, to unlock their hidden potential, and to create work lives that are both fulfilling and financially rewarding. Our team of experienced coach and consultants, armed with a wealth of knowledge, practical strategies, and a genuine passion for helping others succeed, is here to guide you every step of the way. We'll work with you to identify your strengths, clarify your goals, overcome those pesky limiting beliefs, and develop a personalized roadmap to career liberation. Your complimentary career breakthrough call awaits. And because we believe everyone deserves the chance to experience the transformative power of coaching, we're offering something rather special, a complimentary career breakthrough call. That's right, my friends, absolutely free of charge. A chance to connect with our expert coach, Dr. Joga, to share your career aspirations and to get a taste of the insights and support that await you on the other side of that call. No strings attached, no sales pitches, just a genuine conversation dedicated to helping you gain clarity, identify those first crucial steps, and determine if M Yoga Coaching and Consulting is the right fit for your journey towards career excellence. Your future, your freedom, a time for bold choices. We stand at a pivotal moment in history, my friends. The old ways of working, the rigid structures, the soul-crushing commutes, the never-ending pursuit of someone else's definition of success, they're crumbling faster than a stale biscuit in a cuppa. The future of work is being rewritten and you, my friend, have the opportunity to be a co-author of your own destiny. It's a time for bold choices, for embracing the unknown, for stepping outside those self-imposed comfort zones and into the vast expanse of possibilities that await. So I ask you, my friend, what will your legacy be? Will you choose to be a passive bystander in the unfolding story of your career? Or will you seize the reins, embrace the freedom that is your birthright and create a work life that fills you with purpose, passion and an unshakable sense of fulfillment? The only way to do great work is to love what you do, Steve Jobs. As we conclude our journey together, let these words from a man who dared to challenge conventions to think differently, to create the future he envisioned, serve as a guiding light on your path. 
Remember, my friends, life is too short to spend our days toiling away at jobs that drain our souls and leave us feeling uninspired. The world needs your unique talents, your passions, your contributions. So go forth, my friends, and create a career, a life that sets your soul on fire. Embrace the freedom that is yours for the taking and let the world witness the brilliance that shines from